All right, everybody, welcome to Head Kick Audio. I got a very special guest that's going to be competing over at Rise of the Prospects Dos. Um, I got Sam, the Iceman Moncada. He's going to be taking on Zachary Gomez at Featherweight, um, four and three overall. Um, last time out, uh, you ran into uh, uh, El Chapo, um, and we're learning to start a, or we're looking to start a win streak on July 9th which is when this fight takes place over at the Rialto Theater. Um, the first thing I want to ask you is what adjustments have you made since your last time out? Uh, just picking up and uh, improve on everything. Striking, my grappling. Um, a little more heavy on the wrestling. Chapo was a really good wrestler. Um, and he was a lot stronger than I expected, but I feel a lot better this camp than last one. It was a few years since my last fight, so um, it was kind of shaking the rest off. Okay, and uh, you train over at Rise Combat Sports under the tutelage of Chris Carriasso. Everybody knows who he is, uh, fought for the UFC title. Uh, what types of things and, you know, uh, I don't know like how to, how to say it, uh, Without sounding like a dumbass, but what 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 things has he been teaching you? What have you been picking up from him? Um, everything. He's been my one and only uh, real coach. I uh, picked up everything. Um, working law range stuff to uh, this camp, keeping that good range where we're not getting hit, but we're hitting back. Okay, and uh, a, a decent sized featherweight. Um, how, how does your size stack up against your opponents? I haven't, I haven't seen you two, uh, side by side. Um, so do you think that you'll have an advantage there? Uh, I think I'll probably have a strength advantage. I'm pretty strong for my size. Everyone says you feel way stronger than you look. So it's a good problem to have. It's yeah. a good problem to have. <laughs> Especially in cage fighting, you know, the guys look at you and are like, oh, okay, I'll throw this guy around. And then they, uh, you know, they learn that they cannot. Um, yeah. Now, uh, of course, without going into too much detail uh, about strategy and stuff like that, but what types of, you know, tweaking and stuff with the techniques are we doing? Uh, last fight, we didn't do too much pressure. Uh, guys getting in my face, putting the pressure on. This one, we're getting a little more pressure. Uh, regardless if it's striking and grappling, grappling, it's everything. Just pushing, putting the pressure on me a little bit more. Um, and I'm uh, adapting to it real fast and easy. Okay. And do you think in this camp that, that your, your, uh, your coaches and your training partners have done a good job of covering like, you know, no stone left unturned? Yeah, absolutely. They, they don't let anything slide. You suck at grappling, they're going to take advantage of it. You suck at striking, they're going to take advantage of it. So uh, they're taking any advantage they can. I'm not giving them too many, though. Okay. Well, um, in, in your last fight, you could tell that you've got hard. Um, you know, uh, Chapo is a, a very, very skilled fighter, and you didn't quit on yourself, which is one of the things that probably made that fight a whole lot better. Two guys that really just went in there and tried to take each other's heads off. But even when the going got tough, you didn't give up on yourself. So I'd like to, you know, kudos to you for having a big oh, one of thank those. You. Thank you. You know what I mean? But I think also it was a very good learning experience against a high level fighter. And it's only going to make you better. I don't see you getting worse from that experience. I definitely, definitely see you getting better, which is why I'm so excited that I get to be there and watch round two uh, of uh, Moncada. Okay. So. Now, I'll fight bullshit aside, okay? I want to talk about uh, some things you do outside of fighting. What, what does the Iceman like to do uh, for fun these days? Um, I'm at the gym most of the time, so I'm either training, teaching, doing privates, or just messing around in there. Um, if I'm not there, I'm home watching some movies or going out hiking, stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. Uh... I, I know that I understand that you guys are up north, so there's a lot of beautiful hikes up there. Uh, unfortunately, I'm all the way over here down south, but we got some pretty good looking uh, hikes out here, too. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. Um, now, uh, you said private. So are you a, a private instructor uh, for oh. your main income or do you have a job? 
Uh, my main income is being a uh, coach and instructor at the gym. Um, just a lot extra uh, cash come in with the privates. Okay, and uh, is there anybody else in your gym that you know hasn't quite made their their MMA or striking or grappling debut coming up in the ranks that uh, we should really be keeping an eye on, Coach? Um, see. We always got a bunch of young guys coming up. Uh, you guys, you know, El Toro, he's coming up still. He's been uh, taking a little time off, relaxing uh, after that great performance. Uh, Tyler, my teammate, Lanham, he's fighting as well. Um, he's going to put on a great fight. This is going to be a rematch for him. Uh, Quinn, you, got, you guys saw her. She fought really hard and a uh, great fight as well, last uh, fight. So lots of lots of talent coming out of uh, Rice Combat Sports. Yes, sir. And with all that talent means you get no rest in the gym. They are probably constantly all over you, especially when you've got a fight booked. Correct? Absolutely. There is no rest. Uh, I'm I'm never looking for the rest. I'm like, all right, let's go. Even though I'll like I don't care. I'm like, let's go. I'm tired. You're tired. Let's go. Well, and I see that literally goes back to the not giving up on yourself. What you do in the gym prepares you for what you do in the cage. And I understand that it's not all, you know, roses and sunshine while you're in the gym. There's a lot of shit going on that, you know, spectators don't really get to see the injuries, the, you know, the weight cuts. I mean, there's a whole lot of stuff that goes into it. And, you know, thankfully, I don't. I, th I think you're probably uh, starting to cut cut a lot of stuff out of your diet, but the main weight portion of the weight cut hasn't started, right? No, not yet. Um, but the weight's coming down really smooth. Uh, clean eating, just training hard is really what's going on. Um, not until really fight weeks when the, the real cut comes down to it. Okay, it's a nice segue into my favorite question of the interview. Now, on July 9th, when the referee raises your arm and the announcer announces the Iceman as the winner, I would like to know how you are going to celebrate with that victory meal. Lay it on me. What you got? Um, first, I got to get a drink. You know, I haven't had a beer or anything this whole camp. Uh, after that, that night, probably just go by Empire, get a couple slices of pizza. Enjoy some of that. And then next couple of days is enjoy wherever I've been craving. What are some things that you've been craving? I'd like to know. Um, breakfast mainly, like biscuits and gravy, French toast, uh, pancakes, all that good stuff that I can't eat right now. Yeah, see, not only am I a hat guy. Uh, shout out to Sacrifice Over Glory uh, for this dope merch that they gave me. But I am a breakfast guy. I am like a eggs, bacon, sausage, French toast, pancakes, cereal-loving motherfucker, man. <laughs> that I am all about breakfast. So after the fight, let's get some breakfast. I am 100% sure. down. 100%, yeah. I'm down for <laughs> it. <laughs> All right. And uh, OK, so after the fight, right, you're, you know, hopefully it's just a quick, you know, one and done. You know what I mean? Get in there, uh, finish the guy and get out. You you already competed at the last rise of the prospects. How active are you looking to stay throughout the rest of 2022? Uh, I'm looking maybe one more fight, maybe go do some JITS tournaments um, and just keep training, keep myself in shape, help these other guys get ready for fights if they want to fight, stuff like that. Okay, well, uh, come July 9th, we're going to be 5-3. and three. Um, I I'd like to know, I know that we're, you know, taking our steps towards, you know, being the greatest of all time. Of course, that's why everybody gets into the sport is because they want to be the best. How far off do you think once you get your hand raised on July 9th that you're, you know, how far from pro? Um, that's a ultimate question for me and Chris to discuss. Uh, he's the pro. He's the expert. He's been at the very top. So I'm going to go off of what he feels. If he thinks a couple more fights, great. If he thinks this is the last amateur fight, great. It doesn't matter to me. I just want to. Be prepared and he'll make sure i'm prepared uh regardless okay and um of course you know the the fight game is a is a cruel son of a bitch 
You know what I mean? So I'm hoping that you make it to the scale safely because that is the first fight. And then, of course, on July 9th, um, hopefully you get to, uh, to have some fun in there, mix some shit up and get your hand raised. At the end of the day, as fighters, that's all we really want. Um, I'd like to give you a chance before we get out of here to thank anybody you would like to. Coaches, family members, friends, training partners, sponsors. Take it away, man. All right. Um, first, guy, thanks, uh, Jen Hutchinson, for letting me be on ROP again and play on another amazing show. Um, she works really hard, so you guys make sure you thank her when you see her out there. Uh, Coach Chris, I got to thank him. He's one whooping my ass, making sure I'm in shape, I'm ready for the fight. Um, my main training partner, Tyler Lanham, he's getting ready for the fight long, uh, right beside me. Me and them at many camps together. And we're both going to put on a great show. And then just the rest of my team at Rise, you guys always push me. Um, I thank you guys for always making me better every time. All right. And any sponsors you'd like to shout out, my friend? Uh, no, no sponsors. You hear that? No sponsors. So if you want to sponsor this guy, <laughs> give him a fucking call. Drop your uh, your Instagram, your Facebook, Twitter, whatever you got. All right. Uh, you guys can hit me up at Sam Iceman 13 um, on Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. Um, really hope to see everyone there. I want to hear some Iceman chants out there, guys. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, again, I, I'm I'm looking forward to this fight for sure. You you made an instant fan out of me uh, from your last competition, and I, I, I very much look forward to seeing you compete again. Again, that's July 9th, uh, and my man's got tickets. General admission. 50 bucks, VIP, 75, 65, somewhere in there. Uh, you've got no excuse. You've got plenty notice to tell, you know, the guys, hey, we're either going to this fight so you guys can go to the bars without me, okay? You know what I mean? Tell mom, tell dad, tell whoever. that you got to watch uh, the Iceman go throw down July 9th over at the Rialto Theater. Anything else before I let you go, my man? Uh, no, thanks for the uh, hit me up for an interview. Appreciate being on the show. Um, look forward to seeing you at the fights as well. All right, and real quick, pick up that shirt for me so everybody could see that beauty. Look at that. Oh, oh, it's gorgeous, man. It's gorgeous. All right, Sam. Uh, we're what is what is today? What is today? So the twentieth. So we're like what nineteen days out? Uh, yeah, about three weeks. About three weeks. I cannot wait. All right, buddy. Well, like I said, safe travels to the scale, and we'll see you July 9th. All right, thank you, man. Until next time.